What's up guys, welcome back. Utah from Shibuya Incident. He makes an appearance at the end, looking like he's seen some stuff. He looks intense, like he looks like he's got some major skills and he's not afraid to use them. <laughs> so, landscape page, pencil eraser, hit pause or go too fast. Head's not like bang in the middle because his sword is, you know, wrapped in fabric and I wanted to fit it in on this side. So center point of my page is about here. And the eyes will be like to the left of the center line. So like in here, this space. Okay. So we start with his large eye. We're slightly in three quarter pose, but the eyes are like pretty close to the same size. So we'll start here with the eyelid line. So diagonal up and then across like so, right? Fairly flat on there. The bottom of it is broken up like curved lines, like that, right? That's basically the eye shape. But in anime, the top eyelid line is usually thicker. So you want to like spike this, right, kind of like that. Make it kind of spiky on the bottom. Right. And then there's usually a spike line coming across here. So, darker top eyelid line makes the eyes stand out, gives it that anime style. And off course there a little bit, not too bad. So, iris, half circle coming down from that eyelid line. Pupil, just like a little intense dot, just there. And then he has sort of bags underneath his eyes, like dark circles, but it's done like hatching sort of curve lines here. Like that. And then his eyelid lines. So we got one like here relatively flat following the trajectory there and then he has some hatching lines on the inside here and they lead up to his eyebrow which comes across here so this is the bottom line for it you want to add a space that you can color gray and or black so you go up and it's always wider close to the nose so it gets skinnier as we go down so again he looks like he's about to fall asleep or He's not impressed with anyone, especially Yuji. So, other eye. So, in this one, eye width approximately, right? So, here to here, the, particularly the top eyelid line, will fit in between. And then you'll do the next one about there. And then you want to go across there. Pretty flat. And then again, that sort of broken kind of curved line, like so. And then we'll thicken up this top eyelid. And you want to have a little spike sticking out here. Like so. And then his iris again. Half circle. And then a small little pupil just under there. And then those bags underneath his eyes. Just there. Let me take some extra stuff here. I think he's got an eyelid line coming across the top. It's like a skin fold for his eye. And then the eyebrow again, so we'll go here and you want to make it sort of thicker on this side and then skinnier as we go back and then some hatching inside there. 
we got a nose line then, kind of a broken one, just there. And then like some hatching on the other side. And some hatching inside here, a little extra details in this guy. Maybe like a line like there as well. And his nose, so we just come down here and we do like a kind of an essing sort of shape line like that. It's kind of like a like a flat S. It's kind of got a little bump for the tip of the nose. And then it kind of curves down that way. And then his nostril line is there. And then his mouth, it's one of those broken kind of anime lines, right? So it goes that way. And then there's a bit of a gap. And then it goes that way. It's kind of flat, unimpressed. And then his bottom lip just here. And his chin. Like that. Now, roughly speaking, this space and this space are about the same. So chin to his nostril is about the same as nostril to this top eyelid, roughly. Right? So here to here, because his like eyes are all droopy, like his eyes are nearly closed. So it's like here to here, about the same as here to here. And then nostril to the bottom lip, about the same as bottom lip to chin, the bottom lip guy. So here and here, roughly, are about the same. His, his bottom lip is really skinny, so it's pretty close. There might be a little extra. So we're right at the bottom of that bottom lip. It's about the same. Right, and then his jaw comes up this way, right? Go past the eye. We'll go, it sort of seems to be in line with just here. So we'll go to about here. And then change his direction and goes up towards his ear. And the other side. That way. Curves around his cheek. And goes up out for his forehead out there. This is like a three quarter pose, so you can see like a cheekbone and then his jaw, right? It's different on both sides. So this side goes around his forehead then and comes up towards his hair. And then his hair, his part in his hair is above this line and it's your forehead is about the size of your nose roughly, right? So it's about this much. So his hairline's about here. And so this space and this space are about the same. Same nose, the nostril to the top of his nose there, roughly. That's about the size of the forehead. And then we have this zigzag sort of hairline. Going that way. And he has some fringe that comes over that. But we can see a little ear on this side. That sort of shape. And then he has lots of fringe that covers an ear on this side, but we can see a bit of it here. So, that fringe, right? So we might have to raise some of this after we draw it, but there's a fringe line that starts kind of here. Spiking. Like that, and then there's one that goes in this way. And then goes back. And then down here. And then travels up. And it comes over the ear then. Start to get some texture lines then from behind his head. So it's like, so we'll go sort of down behind 
an ear then. And this will disappear into his collar eventually somewhere there. And behind his neck, which is like here. Looks like we have another little hairline here. And we have more fringe over this side. That's like the back of his head. So there's a couple of extra spikes here. And this goes up and around that way. Some texture lines. Maybe we'll do the hair that kind of falls off this side as well. Skinny sort of hair spikes here. And some that come out from behind his ear. And then some this way. And this will go around. There's another spike here. But then it starts to go up this way. Seems to bump in a little bit here. There's like a part in his hair. You know, in the middle sort of here. And then top of his head. Like that. And then there's some hair textures inside here. And anything you draw over, you can erase or color over, obviously, like these lines that you shouldn't see. And then his ears. Have lines inside. Boom, boom. Okay. So, neckline there, front of his neck on the other side, sort of here. And then he's a neck muscle that way. And then his white collar comes around here. So goes down that way. And then it's got like an inside area. So it's got like two lines, basically. It's kind of like a little edge line to it. And then this is kind of like closed here, but stitching. And a button. And then the back of this comes down, but he's got a strap in the bottom of the collar. Shoulder going that way. Do, do, do. Right, so he has a strap coming over this part of his shoulder. By the way, hit pause if I go too fast. So the strap goes this way. Oop. The hand got stuck. And then this thing kind of has, it, so it's like wrapped around itself sort of here. It's got like fabric lines across it. And then this comes down this way, and the rest of his shoulder goes there. And this comes down here. So this is like a cover for a sword, right? So it kind of bumps out once or twice, and then goes up and around, kind of like it's like a thick blanket sort of wrapped around his sword. And then it has an edge line here with some folds. And then like a fold there. Like that. Boom, boom. Am I missing anything? Nope. Utah from 
Shibuya. Hope it's helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.